Hello, Scotty here. Uh, today I am going to try and make a few improvements on the floor that I have. Overall, this floor, I do like it, but it does have a couple things that uh, I think I'm just going to try and improve a little bit. One of the main things that I don't like about it is when it sits on a pallet, you've got that central 2x4 and the 2x4s on each side, some usually fairly thin lumber across there. So the load here is on those boards, and when you have this thing stacked up, it's pretty heavy and with moisture and time, it uh, it wants to sag, and then that center 2x4 presses up here, and all I have here is a piece of half-inch plywood, and then I end up with a piece of half-inch pine six inches wide, but it's on its flat, and that's not very stable. So this this tends to, to kind of crown upward, and then it makes it difficult to get the door in and out in the back. So I wanna I wanna try and make it a little bit more rigid. Another thing I don't like about it, I, I wish I had a larger landing board. Another issue I have is making these side pieces. I used the router to create a dado for the plywood to go into. Um, that's all fine and dandy, but a router is one of those machines that likes to eat fingers. Um, so I'd like to try and make a floor that I don't need to use the router. Another issue I had with this with this uh, dado cut going all the way through here is when you go to put the screws in this landing board in the front, it never seemed to fail. The screw would get into that, so that was a little thing, but I didn't like that. But uh, yeah, bigger landing board and then a little wee bit more rigid. Uh, still want lots of ventilation. Um, I like the small entrances that I have, although I made this piece permanently attached. I realize I could probably modify that. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to try and make one with a removable entrance reducer. So, this is, I've been playing around here for a couple days. This is kind of what I come up with. This is almost identical to that double queen colony I made. Um, yeah, except obviously just single. I got a landing board. Initially, I made this one that screws onto the front here. Um, I decided actually to make it quite a bit bigger. It has the drawer in the back. This is that plastic signage stuff. It's going to get a grid to go in there, but that fits real nice. It has three vent holes on each side, uh, drilled in an upward angle for a screen. And then I have got an entrance reducer for there, and then of course we stack the boxes up. Uh, I don't have plans for this. I never seem to. I just kind of build as I go. The dimensions are really not all that important. Um, it's made to fit my brood boxes, so if you are jotting down these numbers, you best go measure your own box and then modify stuff. All of the height measurements, they're all just based on the lumber that I have. So this one's seven and a quarter, and then these other pieces in the back it made to different heights, but it's all just because it was seven and a quarter. Anyway, um, gonna have a little bit of fun, and uh, we'll see if we can't make this. Possibly at the end I'll take this apart. This one here I didn't glue together. This I'll just put together with air nails. This is my this is my pattern, um, and I'll save it like this for future. I'm gonna make three or four of them, and if, if I like them, well, then maybe next winter I'll build more of it. Anyway, let's get to cutting some wood, and let's have some fun. Stick around. All right, so the first step's gonna to be to get everything cut the length, and I'm, I'm gonna make a half a dozen of these, but I'll start with the side, which is 16 and 5 eighths. Well, a couple ways you go about this. You could run over to the chop saw and, uh, and cut it there, but I've been kind of playing around with a new method. Just measure it, mark it carefully, um, put a good pencil mark on there, and then get yourself a good sharp rubber mallet and just, and you just knock off the sawdust, mark the next one, and carry on. All right, so I've got my 16 and 5 8 pieces, which are the ends. I got those cut, and the front and the back piece are 19 and 3 quarters. Uh, the one for the back where the little door is, we'll have to rip that, but we'll get to that. I need to make these internal pieces now. Uh, these two are going to be 13 and 5 8 and same thing as working with the chop saw. When you've got a big ugly knot like that, I should be able to get one piece out of there and one out of there, but uh, yeah, we have to cut around that. So, same as always, just measure, mark, get your square, put a good line on here, and uh, just like before, just take, your, just take your mallet, just make sure it's sharp, it's all there is to it. Knock off the sawdust, mark the next one, and carry on. Um, something I thought I should mention, if you were cutting 
If you were cutting hardwood, you probably want a metal cutter. But for this pine, good sharp mallet, rubber mallet's all you need. So I'll get this one marked and I gotta cut a couple more. Now I will be able to rip this. I mean, uh, the dimension I've chosen, it's gonna be exactly half. So I only have to cut one of these uh, to length for each for each box because I am gonna rip that. But uh, let me get a few more made and then we'll come back and we'll we'll rip some. Stay tuned. All right, so I've got the boards that are gonna make up the internal pieces, cut the length. Now, I'm gonna rip these right exactly in the center. It'll give me two pieces, because I need one here and one here. And for the longer one, which is uh, 18 and a quarter, I need one of each there. So nothing really complicated here. You could just go over to the uh, table saw and set your fence and cut it, but I find it a whole lot easier just to knock off the sawdust. And now we've got the one piece for the bottom and the piece for the top. I'll. Uh, I'll split the rest of this and then we'll get back on to making the next piece. So stick around. All right, so next I need to rip this piece for the back. Uh, these boards are seven and a quarter by 18 and a quarter. And of course for the front, they stay the full width. But for the back one, um, we need to knock it down to four and an eighth. And the piece that's left over will create the little, the little door. So again, all I do is just measure over four, four and an eighth and mark it. And then just very, very carefully knock off the sawdust, go on to the next. Now this one here, actually, before I go on, I may as well finish this. This ends up being two inches. This is a little bit trickier to cut, but you mark it two inches. And the piece that's left over will make the handle. But when you've got a small piece like this, you've got to get a good, good, good firm grip. <clears throat> yeah, that's definitely a little bit harder. Hard on the hands, too. But anyway, this piece that's left over will make the handle. And this piece will make the door. This piece goes there. So I got a couple more to, to rip up here and we'll get that done and then we'll get on to probably the plywood next. Stick around. All right, it's time to cut the plywood and I have to admit, I do struggle ripping plywood. It, uh, yeah, the 3 8 stuff's not a big deal, but this, this half inch stuff, no. Nah, when I was younger, fine, but not anymore. Um, a couple little techniques here. Uh, I need this cut to 18 and a quarter, which actually I've already done, and then the last cut's going to be 15 inches. So measure over and uh, and mark 15 inches. Now we need to get a good straight line here. So we've got a square. Now you can't just mark this. Um, you end up with a real jagged cut. You want to get yourself a, a good sharp exacto knife and score this. If you don't score it, it it's, the gig is up. Another thing that I've learned is, is you need to put a couple of support pieces underneath, just, just either side of the cut. Again, it just, just makes things a little easier. And never mind the rubber mallet. It doesn't matter how sharp it is. It's just not going to do it with the plywood. It's the cross layers, the grain going in too many directions. So you want to get yourself a good sharp metal cutter and uh, one good sharp crack. Don't, uh, don't be shy, because if you don't get it cut all the way through, well, you're gonna have a mess. So here we go. Uh, here you are. Takes a little practice. Quite often I do end up with a bit of a burr and you gotta file it or sand it or whatever, but uh, yeah, metal cutter is way better for this than the rubber mallet. So I got a couple more cuts to make and then we'll, uh, maybe we'll start assembling. So stick around. All right, one little detail I need to take care of before I start assembling. Um, these pieces here that they're 16 and 5 eighths by the seven and a quarter, they make up the sides and don't worry, we'll do the holes near the end. Um, but anyway, I need to create a three quarter inch by three quarter inch uh, little cutout or notch to accept this piece of three quarter in the back. That's for the wire mesh. These three pieces of three quarter by three quarter, they hold down the number eight hardware cloth. But to put the hardware cloth on, you have to have something to staple it to. So I want a piece across the back. Um, the easiest thing there, like I say, is just create this little notch. So to do that, I just grab a piece that's already cut the three quarter inch and line it up along this back edge, nice and straight if we can. And then just put a little pencil line there and then line it up across the top and put the pencil line there. Now, you probably could take that over to the table saw and set the height of your blade to three quarter and then turn it and do that. Or you probably do that on a router, but ah, dentist gets a little mad at me, but you know, a little sawdust. 
Doctor says it's good for me, a little bit of fiber. So anyway, that creates that little piece. That's nice. So I'll gnarl off the rest of these and then, uh, then maybe we'll get to some assembly. So give me a minute. All right, uh, today I'm gonna try and get this thing assembled. I've, I've made up just a little assembly jig or gluing platform, I guess, more than anything else. It doesn't keep the corners tight, but it does hold everything in place while I'm trying to glue it. So I've got my main pieces laid out. I do have a couple more pieces I need to cut, but uh, we can get started with this. Um, the pieces with the little notch, they, uh, they go on either side. I just kind of stand them around a little bit of an angle just to hold them for the moment. Then uh, these are the 16 and 5 eighths. Then the 18 and a quarter piece has to go across the back. But before I do that, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on here. Just kind of like I say, just stand that there on a bit of an angle. A little bit of glue there and then stand that in there. Then this piece that's 18 and a quarter will now, just kind of looking for any curve, put that in the back. Stand that up, and, and that'll stay. You know, this little jig doesn't hold it. Like I said, it doesn't hold it perfect, but that's fine. Uh, okay, now there's a piece that's gone across the front, and I have changed it a little bit. I think I had that at four and an eighth. I've dropped it a little bit to four and a sixteenth. So that, uh, do I want to glue that yet? Yeah, I need to glue that. So put a little glue across the end of this one, and a little glue across the end of that one. And then just sit it loosely in place here at the front. I'll try and give you a better view of this in a second. Then we've got two pieces that are 18 and a quarter and two pieces that are 13 and 5 eighths. And they have to get stood on the inside. They're actually going to create kind of a platform that the plywood's going to sit on. The whole idea of me building this was I was trying to avoid the, I was trying to avoid the router. So I think, I think I'm going to put the 18 and a quarter piece in first. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put a, reasonably generous bead of glue on the back of that and just push that down and push that in there and then this piece actually has to go up against this one this four and a sixteenth so uh, which way do I want that I'm gonna put that we not there I'm actually gonna put that up um, do I want that up yeah if I put it that way it'll actually be completely hidden and it shouldn't cause any grief so put a bead of glue on there and just, I'm, I'm just, this is all just temporary. I'm going to clamp this and then uh, air nail it and screw it. So then the two pieces that are 13 and 5 eighths, same thing, nice little squiggly bead of glue. Put that down between there. And the same thing with this one. Okay, put that down in there. And at this point, I'm going to grab a couple of bar clamps and I'm just going to put them on here and this will just pull everything in tight to the, the little, you know, to these pieces that are attached to the plywood. Uh, forgive me a second, I'm going to come in front of the camera. Okay, now normally I have this plywood clamp down with some C clamps just to make it easier to put the screws in, but then I wouldn't be able to show you what I've done. So the those four pieces just go in the inside and create a little box in there. So now all I'm going to do is grab my air nailer at first and like I say this jig doesn't hold these corners perfect so I can move them and manipulate them a little wee bit if I need to and I can tap it and whatnot um, get that outside that edge lined up and I'm just gonna throw an air nail in there and now I'm looking at the inside making sure that all the pieces are are flush and again I'm just gonna stick just a couple air nails in there and once again, I got to come around in front of the camera. I'm pulling that out and then I am trying to keep my fingers out of the way because occasionally a nail will come out the side at you. Tends to ruin your day. Then, so I'm not going to use the clamps. I'm looking for the, uh, I'm going to use inch and a, these are inch and a quarter. What I'm actually going to do is the four pieces on the inside, I'm just going to put a couple screws in each into the outside boards just to, just to hold that. Then I'm going to actually put an inch and a half um, through the sides and into the into the back and into the front. Just trying to line it up so that you end up, you know, in the middle of that piece of wood. That squeezes that glue. Good. This one looks good. Okay, uh, so there we have, this is actually going to be the front where the bees come in. This is going to be where we put our drawer. Okay, so now 
don't really need the jig actually. Get it out of my way. Uh, now what I want to do is put this piece of plywood in. The plywood is uh, 18 and a quarter by 15th and it's half inch plywood. So I'm going to lay a, a good bead of glue on the top, so those four internal pieces. I'm being real generous with the glue here. And then just try and pick the better side of the plywood. Drop it in there nice, nice. I'll throw a couple air nails just to hold it temporary. But I am actually going to put some, oh, I'll probably put an inch and a half screws in. And I'll put them down a little wee bit of an angle into that piece underneath. That is the basic unit assembled. There's, of course, the four pieces on the inside. They just create a good, uh, sturdy platform for the plywood to sit, and it uh, just prevents me from needing to make that dado cut. And yeah, it adds a little weight, but that should make it quite stiff. So now I need to cut. Uh, I need to cut a piece of three quarter by three quarter that's going to sit in this notch, and it's 19 and three quarters. Uh, and then I, I need to make a piece that goes across here at the front that. Um, the wire mesh is going to go on to. And then I'm going to need to cut a piece that's 18 and a quarter that after the wire goes on, uh, it will go on top. And then two pieces that are 16 and 5 eighths that goes on top of there. So uh, give me a couple minutes and I'll get that ripped up. I'll cut the length and ripped and then we'll, uh, we'll assemble a couple more pieces. All right, so I'm just sorting through some of my miscut pieces. Uh, this was a piece that was cut to go on the back here, but uh, I had made it the wrong, I made a mistake. But it's the right length to make up the piece that's going to go at the front to hold the screen. So we'll just, that'll be, uh, that'll be just about perfect. And the, the width of it's not important. And that was about four, so it's just a shade under two. It's just a piece to hold the screen. Could be can be anything at all. So I'm just going to lay a little bit of glue on the end of that, and along the front of it, and then along the end here, and we'll just position that in there. I might need my hammer. It's a little little bit there. Not at all. That's fine. Just make sure it's level. This is where the bees are going to be coming, running into the hive. So uh, I'm just going to throw an air nail in the end here, another one in this end, and then I do think uh, I think I will put a couple couple screws here across the front just to make sure that it stays put, and one here. All right. So next, we have to make all of these little three-quarter pieces. I'm just going to get that out of my way, move some of my junk. Uh, we've got a piece here. Okay, so we've got a piece here that we're going to go uh, 16, 16 and 5 eighths, draw our line. And then we've got another piece that's going to be uh, 18 and a quarter. And these will, we'll cut these all the length first, and then, uh, then we'll go and we'll rip these all into three quarter. And the last piece we have is 19 and three quarters. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna line all three of these up. Nice, nice. And then get our, Good sharp rubber mallet. And there we are. Let's grab these, these three pieces now. We'll uh, need to rip these all into three quarter, but I'm sorry. Cutting, ripping them by hand to three quarter is just a little bit too hard on the hand. So I think these will uh, we'll do it the old fashioned way. We'll, we'll take these over to the table saw and we'll rip these into three quarters. Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> That was just too easy. <laughs> Pick up all these pieces. Huh. Thank goodness that was a three-quarter sneeze. <laughs> well, all right, we got our three-quarter inch pieces all sorted out. And the piece that's gonna crawl across the back was, yeah, 19 and three quarters by three quarter by three quarter. And then again, this just creates a, a surface for me to staple down the uh, 
the um, screen to, so we're just going to put a little bit of glue in there. And then put this piece in and get it lined up, nice, nice. And then just, just an air nail in there for now. I might put a screw in this later, but for now, just an air nail. So I want to paint the inside of this before I put the screen on. I'm going to have to paint this with a brush. It's too cold outside to be spraying. So uh, I want to get that done first. And just like the magic of those cooking shows, <laughs> I've got one with the inside all painted. So my next step now is going to be to cut the wire and get that stapled on here. All right, so I've got a couple pieces of scrap wire left. That roll of mine is just about empty. Uh, what I like to do here is put it in the corner of the table or put it right, line it up on the corner of the table and then line it up across there and I can see if I've got a straight edge or not. And I am off by a little wee bit. So I'm gonna bring that down and then I'm gonna clamp, I am gonna clamp this end. I do have a little bit of forgiveness on those pieces of wood there. So I don't have to be, I don't have to be right on. I'm only off by a oh, quarter inch or so. Okay, measuring tape. I need a marker. I need, it's 19 and a quarter this way, which is my, uh, my length, but across here I need about 15 inches. So I'm just gonna measure over here, 15 inches, and I'll put a mark on here. And then I'm going to measure over here 15 inches. And I'm going to put a mark on there. And then I'm going to grab my straight edge. And I'm going to line that up like so. And then I'm simply going to just take this and nothing to that. Get rid of that scrap. Get rid of that clamp. Clamp. And then my floor that's painted. Lay that on there. I'm looking for the better edge, making sure that there's where the, the bees are going to have to run in across there. So, you know, actually these are all pretty good. Then I'm going to start in the center. Yeah, just getting this, making sure that it comes out to the back, making sure that it's equal on both sides. And I'll start in the center. I'm just going to give a bit more to the front. I'll start in the center with some quarter inch staples and then work my way out either side. Make sure it's laying flat. You don't need too many here because those pieces of three quarter inch are going to hold down the side and the back, but we want to make sure that it stays flat. Okay, then we need two, two pieces that are 16 and 5 eighths. And then I think this piece here goes across there and that is the 18 and 1 quarter. So, same four. Good bead of glue. And then we'll start with our 16 and 5 eighths. Line it up at the front first and then across the back. And then just pull it out so it's flush. And then, oh, that's that piece. 18 and a quarter goes across. Don't want a gap here. And then the last piece, 16 and 5 eighths. So now I'm lining it up at the front and I'm making sure that it's pushed up tight against this piece that's on the back. And once that glue dries, I, like I said, I might put a screw down through the back corner, but I haven't decided yet. All right, I just went in the house looking at this video and it is starting to run a little long. So we're trying to quit goofing around and playing around so much here and we'll just kind of try and finish this up. Uh, a couple of last pieces I have to make are an entrance reducer. Nothing complicated here. I just cut a piece that's three quarter by three quarter uh, by 18 and a quarter inch long. And then I just created a three eighths by about an inch 
uh, entrance. Then I just cut a couple short chunks, it really makes no difference, two, three inches. Uh, a little bit of glue and an air nail on the end. Uh, just make sure you get it square, and that fits in there actually quite easily. Even though the sides are three quarters, um, there's that piece of wire underneath there, so it gives you that little extra gap, and this just slides in nice. The little blocks just prevent it from going in too far, but then it also gives you a handle to grab it on those really busy days where you want to give your bees lots of, you know, the full, the full width of the entrance. So that's all I did there. To create the, the door that's going to go in the back, this, again, these measurements, it's all just what's working out with my lumber. Uh, it's 18 and a quarter inch long by two inches. Uh, right now it has about a, well, about a quarter inch gap there. But after I paint this, I got a staple on a piece of that plastic signage stuff. The little handle in the back can be anything at all. You could just put a couple screws in there to grab, but again, I just took some three quarter by three quarter and it's a couple of inches shorter, some glue and a couple of air nails in there and that'll create the back door and like I say once the uh, once the uh, plastic is stapled to the bottom that's going to be just fine. Uh, so the last thing to do is a landing board. Now I do know a lot of guys don't bother with landing boards on the front and that's fine I suppose. I have a couple friends of mine who have hives that are up on these 2x4 stands and they have no, no landing board at all or something very small. I mean it works works perfectly fine. But I do find there's lots of times when I'm working the bees, I've got a frame full of bees and I want to shake them off. Yeah, a lot of times you can shake them right back into the top of the hive, but that does they do tend to get up in the air a little bit, then they're right there in your face. Uh, there's lots of times where I like to shake them in front of the hive. And you have to remember a lot of times these are nurse bees, they've never been out of the hive, so they haven't done orientation flights. I don't want to shake them on the ground over there and think that they're going to get back. So I want some kind of a little landing board. Initially I had made this, and this width was just based on the seven and a quarter inch um, material I had. I had created a couple side pieces. These three pieces, it's just the width of my lumber and I ripped it right down the center so as to, you know, get as much useful material, not so much waste. Then I cut this on the chop saw at a 15 degree angle and I cut the top piece here on the table saw at a 15 degree angle. The piece that goes there, there's a little gap there. I'm, you could put that 15 degree angle, I guess, uh, but you really don't need to. This piece, it, makes it st stable, I guess, rigid. It, it ties everything together. But then I'm also able to put the screws through there and put the screws in front. And now the length, the length just works out. Oh, I just took a measurement that's between my two little blocks for my entrance reducer and a little bit, maybe an eighth of an inch less just so it fits. And then that's going to screw onto there. This is fine, but I was thinking about it the other night. I was thinking I really would like something a little wee bit wider. So instead, I made it long, wide enough that two boards go on there. And I, what I ended up doing, because I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, when it goes on, I had 15 degree on there. Well, this is coming down into, you know, it's going to be sitting on a pallet. So I reduced these angles to 10 degrees. And the angle, all the angle there is there for is uh, just so the water runs off. But as you can see, this will screw in. Um, but it's going to give me a bigger area to shake some bees if I want them to, and whether I got the reducer there or not, they can uh, they can just run back into the hive. And it is just put on with a couple screws. So if I do find with the weather that the wood starts to rot or starts to curl, I can always just make myself some more or make something different. I, um, I have all the pieces cut for this. I will put one together real quick. I did not make a jig. I only, only have actually three more to make. I'm only making four or five of these. So uh, all I did is the two pieces with the uh, 10 degree angle. And then I've got the one piece, where'd it go? Uh, this one, I guess. This is going to go, yeah, it's going to go between here. So, like I say, if I was making a lot of these, I'd probably make a little jig. Uh, put the glue on there, and then all I'm going to do is I just line this up. A little awkward, especially the first couple, first little bit. But just get that lined up. And again, I'll just put an air nail in there. Make sure the bottom's lined up, but then get your fingers out of the way. Then turn it around. Make sure you put your two angle pieces on <laughs> the same way, or that's going to cause a bit of a problem. Put a little glue on the end of that, and then butt it up to that. Not that difficult, really. Check that bottom a little bit. You can twist it a little bit if you need to. Okay. Then, got my two boards. 
I've got a couple more over there. So you want to make sure that you put your angle on. Oh, and then all I'm doing is I'm just splitting the difference here. You can see I have, I have this all cut a little bit, just inside a little bit. I guess it could have came right out. Well, yeah, it could have come right out to the edge, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm just checking that. And then I got a couple boards that don't have an angle on. And that should come out there pretty decent. Okay, so now lay a bit of glue on here. Across there. And again, I don't have the, the uh, 10 degree angle cut on that piece, but I don't really think it's necessary. That gap is so small. And I'm just using my fingers. I'm not measuring that. I'm, it's not that important. And I'm, I'm using my, my pointer finger there in the front. That is kind of important. If you have this dropped back a bit, when this is screwed to here, you're going to end up with a gap there. You know, I, I don't think it's, it would, a gap would be the end of the world there. But yeah, try and keep it tight. Then I'm just going to throw an air nail in the center. And then what I do is I had another one here somewhere. Oh, here they are. Okay, I'm just putting one in the back just to hold these two pieces um, equal distance, same as the one I got at the front. And then I'll set that on there, try to close that up, get that the same. And then I look underneath, put four air nails in there, same with this side. All right. Make sure everything is the way I like it and I want it. Then uh, these are for the next one. So I got a couple more to put together. I will maybe check this just to make sure it's going to fit between there. And yeah, that's going to go right in there just like that. So now I'm just going to put uh, two screws there, two here, a couple across the front. I will put a couple screws in there. I'll let the glue dry and I'll make, I got two more of these to make. Uh, I've got all these made, but the, everything else is made. I'll get everything all painted. And then we'll come back and put it all together, see what it looks like, and uh, have some final thoughts. So, Okay, I forgot one little step, guys. Uh, I've got to put the vent holes in. And for that, I've made up a little jig, vent holes for new floor, and I've just put a couple locator blocks in the back. Like I've said before, what I do is I'll measure, and I'll get a square, and put some lines on, and figure out where I want the holes. Maybe even drill a set to make sure that everything's going to be good. Once I've figured out where I want the holes, then I just simply make a jig up, that's going to sit on there and line up with the holes that I already made. And all that allows me to do is when I make the rest, the holes all end up the same. So put that block against the bottom, that one against the end. Make sure that it's tight and square. Take a pencil, draw a line across, put three little tick marks where those are. Then uh, if I was doing a lot of these, I'd use a corded drill. I do find the cordless drill with these hole saws. Eh, it takes a little time. Just get it started. And then I'm just going to tilt it back some. Don't know what the angle is, but just you just want it tilted back some so that when the rain hits the side of the hive, it runs down off. So let me drill this hole. And it's just about through. Um, a couple of them I made the mistake, the wire's already on, so I have no choice, but I'll drill all the way through. But these ones that don't have the wire on the top, it's a whole lot easier if you get part way through and then you just come to the inside and finish it, and then your little donut ends up right there. Very easy to take out. If, if you drill all the way through, then you've got to get a, a screwdriver and get in here and knock it out. But it's not the end of the world either way, so let me finish up these three holes. Knock the sawdust up there, then I've got some wire out of my way. I've got some wire cut the fit that just lays in here and then some just get it over the holes good and put a couple on each end and maybe one between each hole. Like I say a whole lot easier to do with the wire off. I, you can reach through. I had no choice on the two. I'd forgot them but uh, get a little bit of screen in there. That's number eight hardware cloth and uh, now we're ready for paint. So I'll be back in a minute. Well, all right, I've got her all painted up and put together. The, the front landing board is just on with a few screws, so if I do have to change it or if I want to modify, I might take it off for the winter, haven't decided. I do try and keep the uh, front entrance cleaned out during the winter, and obviously that's going to allow snow to build up, but we'll see how that works out. Um, got my little entrance reducer goes in here. Now, a couple little things. I had some of my tolerances just a little too tight when I painted it. They were a little snug, so this was three-quarter. I ended up taking a hand planer and shaved it down. It's probably between three-quarters and 11 sixteenths. Uh, put a couple of good coats of paint on here, so 
have to keep an eye on that next time. So now, yeah, I got a nice landing board. If I do have a frame, I'm, if you watch any of my other videos, I always work my bees from the back. That's why I have the, the entrance turned to the side instead of on the end like a conventional hive. But now if I got a frame of bees, I can just shake them off onto the front and then look at brood or whatever I'm doing. So yeah, that's, that's why I like the larger landing board. Same thing with the, uh, the little tray on the back. Again, I had the tolerances just a little too tight. Um, probably had less than an eighth of an inch when I painted it. So I, I just had to shave a bit off the end, so I'll, I'll have to repaint that. Probably want to make sure you got a good eighth of an inch. I was probably, well, I was less than an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to put a few of these into service this, this coming season. We'll give them a try. If they work better than the other ones, well, next winter I'll probably build a few more. But uh, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Do appreciate your time. As always, you be good to your bees. And I'm sure it'll be good to you. See you next time.